I wanted to update you guys. Um, I'm here in my parents' camper in their driveway in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and um, I decided to come home from the trail, which was honestly really hard. Um, there were a lot of things that led up to this decision. Um, I feel like really my heart hadn't been in it the past like the, the past couple weeks that I was there really several weeks I guess and um I think the trail in general was a lot more challenging than I had realized um I didn't know that the trail got progressively harder I think I thought that like Pennsylvania was going to be really hard and then um you it was like relatively not easy but medium challenging and then Katahdin was going to be hard but that's actually not true um as we were passing south bounders they kept telling us how hard the whites were and how hard southern Maine was and how hard the presidentials were going to be and um it just was elevating my <laughs> anxiety for being out on trail and I think I just kept getting more and more nervous because of the stories they were telling me about how you know, they were um, climbing some areas that were rock climbing and were just praying that they wouldn't die. And um, it just made me feel very fearful. I hadn't felt before. So um, that was one thing that was really hard for me. I, I was kind of hiking alone for a while. Um, so thinking about heading into those sections was really kind of scary. I had separated from um, my tramleys. I've, I've had a lot of tramleys. Um, the people I hiked with, not on purpose, but you know, I am just a slower hiker. And so sometimes when I hike with people faster than me, it gets, um, it just gets, it's not as fun. I guess I would say that because I'm constantly trying to keep up and having an anxiety of what if I don't get to camp at night on time and I'm not, you know, with my friends, I have to camp alone or whatever. So sorry, this is shaky. <laughs> Switch hands here. Um, so there was a lot I will also say I had a lot of gear malfunctions. So, um, my sleeping pad, um, I got, I, I started with a Nemo, um, and I, I don't know what's going on. We're having some major like weather here and it looks like the, the, um, I don't know. It looks like the lights in here are flashing in it. <laughs> I was wondering if we're going to lose our power. The weather's been crazy because of Hurricane Ida. Um, so yeah, my gear malfunctions, I had, um, I had started the trail, uh, with a sleeping pad, this Nemo that I'd had for several years. I'd used it on part of the world race when I went back out and I used it on some backpacking trips and it was amazing, but then it started getting leaks, uh, around like the baffles in the back. The pad has a hole in it for the second time in two weeks. <laughs> I've been working on this for... 30 minutes, maybe more, and I cannot find the hole. So um, it wasn't like a hole that had been punctured from something I set it on. It was just really uh, a manufacturing defect. So I patched it several times and I thought it was something I was doing wrong. So I ordered a new Nemo um, and I got it at the end of, I think I got it at the end of Pennsylvania and I hadn't slept on it that many nights before it started leaking, the brand new one. Once again, I have a problem with my sleeping pad and it's another Nemo. I actually love the Nemos, but this is a brand new one. So when I realized like what was happening, that it was just uh, a fault of the actual pad, um, that was nerve wracking because I couldn't get a pad on trail that was lightweight. Um, and I didn't want to add extra uh, pounds to my pad or to my backpack. So that was really nerve wracking. I wasn't getting good sleep on trail. And then the other big issue with my gear were my shoes. Um, so my feet, this is really weird, but my feet actually grew. I think what happened is uh, they say that like your arch of your feet like straightens out and then or flattens out and then um, your feet will grow essentially on a through hike. So I wear a size now, I think it's like a size women, a women's 11 or maybe 10 and a half. So up to... It was really like a half size bigger to a whole size and I could not get um, the size that I needed anywhere and I couldn't find the shoes that I've been wearing. So I've been wearing these Nikes that I really love, but I couldn't um, 
I couldn't find them anywhere and I couldn't like switch to another brand because they didn't have another brand in women's size 11. And so I was going to a men's and, um, to make a long story short, I just, I ended up getting, um, another pair of shoes that were like a men's size 10, I think. And it wasn't exactly the right size. Um, I, I didn't like the colors of them <laughs> and I, it was a different, totally different shoe than what I'd been wearing. And I just felt very not confident going into, uh, New Hampshire and some of the hardest, uh, stretches of trail with a brand new shoe that I hadn't tried, uh, you know, had been wearing. So that made me nervous. Um, and then the, it was like just like layers of things that I was worried about. Um, and then the other issue was that, um, none of my gear I felt comfortable with in colder temperatures. Um, so at the beginning of trail, I had started with an old Kelty, uh, sleeping bag that I had and, um, I've had it for years and I think I just messed up the down in it because I've like stored it wrong and it just felt like pen pricks in the middle of the night. So I switched it out and I got, um, I think it's called Western Mountaineering quilt, which is amazing. Um, but it's rated 26 or 27. Um, and it sleeps well, but for me, I'm a cold sleeper. So I was getting cold, like in the forties with this bag, uh, or with this quilt and with my, um, even with, even with an under layer. So, or like a sleeping bag liner. So all of these things compounded, you know, and I, and I had a, a jacket that wasn't warm enough. It was my Patagonia, uh, puffy, but, um, uh, it was a very thin puffy. So I needed a, a thicker puffy. So, um, I was worried about being cold. You know, I was worried about sleeping on the ground because my sleeping pad was going flat and then I didn't have the right shoes. So all of these things are like essential for a through hike. Um, and I just, I couldn't get the gear that I needed. So I was in, um, a hotel room with my parents and just kind of stressing out about all of this and thinking like, I'm going back out. I'm not prepared. I'm going out solo into the hardest sections. And, um, I don't feel confident. I didn't feel good about it. And to top it all off, there was, uh, what was saying was going to be this massive hurricane, Henry or Henri, um, and people were really freaking out about it. Like the forecasters were saying it was going to be the biggest, most devastating hurricane that the East coast had had since the seventies. And, um, some older people that were on the trail that I was, had been hiking with, um, were really worried about, you know, trees being down over the trail and then, you know, taking crews like forever to clean it up. You don't really want to hike through that because you could get stuck between two trees down or you could have a tree fall on you or you could get stuck in a mudslide. I mean, all of these things were kind of compounding, uh, for me. And I just kept my, my anxiety level was like raising and raising and raising. So the story was what happened was, what happened was I ended up, uh, having my parents, I, I decided I was like, I'm going to stay on trail. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skip up. I was hiking, hiking in Vermont. And I said, I'm going to skip up. I'm going to just get to, this is the way I, I want to face things head on. I want to get the hardest things out of the way. So I said, I'm going to go get up, get up to uh, New Hampshire. I'm going to get to the base of Mount Musilaki. I'm going to knock out that mountain uh, before Hurricane Henry hits. And then which I believe it's in, that's in the whites. I get the whites and the presidentials confused, but I believe that's like the start of the whites. So, um, and then I found a hostel and I was just going, that could slack pack me down Mount Musilaki southbound. Um, and then I thought I could just stay there, you know, and wait for this hurricane to pass. Um, and then let my parents go back because they were just spending so much money in hotel rooms. Um, up north because they, I mean, the hotel rooms were ridiculously expensive. So I didn't want them to have to stay out there any longer. Um, so we get to this hostel and I immediately get just a bad vibe, just a bad vibe. And I'm sure it's a great place. I'm sure it's, uh, lovely. I'm sure the people are lovely, but I think I had pictured, um, an experience like I'd had at the beginning of the trail at above the clouds. I don't know. That's just like my, um, <laughs> my baseline, like I judge every other hostel by above the clouds because, um, because the guys who run it are amazing. Lucky is so great. And I don't know. I just thought that I was going to be able to wait out the storms there at, at a place that was similar to that. So I walk in and you can, it just has this 
and I'm not trying to trash the place because I'm sure it's lovely. I think I was just in a weird headspace, but I got this vibe. It was just like a party hostel. It didn't feel comfortable. It wasn't really like an in, like it was inside, but I think it had like a dirt floor. There were bugs flying around everywhere. And I don't, it wasn't like air conditioned or heated that I could tell. Maybe it was. And there was a bunkhouse so you could go up, but it just felt very dingy. It didn't feel like a comfortable place. And then the guys running it were, um, I'm sure they're great, but they were stressed out and they were really, you know, like, let's get this done. They were just kind of, you know, being pushy about the plans and they were upset that my parents had parked outside. Um, they were like, who's, where's this car? Why is this car in the driveway? Um, and so I was, I didn't know anybody there because I had like bounced up ahead of my bubble and I was just looking around like, I don't know any of these people. I don't want to stay here. I don't want to be stuck here with this gear. It's not working and my parents are going to leave. I'm out of my comfort zone. And I was holding back tears and I left, I left and I got in my parents' car. Oh, and I forgot to add this part when we were driving there. I looked up and saw the craziest mountain that I thought was Mount Musilaki, but apparently it, it wasn't. But just the mountain range in general was intense and it scared the crap out of me, if I'm being honest. I mean, it was so scary. It was just like straight rocks. So, oh, I, I just got freaked out and I got back in my parents' car and I cried and I was like, just take me home. I want to go home. So we ended up going to Portsmouth, um, New Hampshire, which is where my parents lived for a while. And we got to see um, the area where they had lived, which was close to there. And then we ended up driving home, which was, I think it was supposed to be a 15 hour drive. It ended up being the longest drive ever because everybody was trying to bail and get on the road and get out of the way of the hurricane. So we were stuck. I mean, it was like hours and hours driving <laughs> um, through this hurricane. And then we ended up saying, at a truck stop for the night. Um, and so, yeah, I'm home now. I gave up on the trail. Um, I'm very disappointed about the whole situation. Um, I also wanted to be here because my family's having a get together. Uh, my mom's side of the family and that I haven't gotten to spend time with in years really. Um, so, uh, but so I'm, you know, I wanted to be here for that. Um, so it kind of worked out, but, and I am getting to stay in their cute um, camper. So that's really nice. But I am, yeah, I, I'm really disappointed and sad and I miss the trail. Post-trail depression is real. I'm anxious every night. Um, I have gone out to REI and <laughs> gotten my shoes taken care of and I've ordered a new um, sleeping bag. Thank you. Cata catabatic catabotic gear it's a new one for me but they were so amazing and so helpful um and yeah I got a new puffy it's warmer so I did quit the trail but I don't think I've given up on it quite yet so I have to stay tuned to see what happens but I do miss my tramley I call my tramway a tramway loosely because it's really just the bubble I was hiking in because I was going, you know, hiking kind of with different people, but I miss them so much. It's, it's, it is so hard not to be, um, not to see your friends every day and it's so hard not to really know what's going on in their lives. And it's, it is hard not to be on the trail. Um, but I was also glad to not be in this perpetual state of panic and fear, um, for whatever reason. And I don't know why I was feeling so much anxiety on the trail. That was something that was very unexpected. I never expected to feel that much anxiety. Um, and I don't know if this next stretch would have been as hard as the Sobos were saying, you know, I mean, the people I, I was meeting, they were super nice, but they did just start the trail. I mean, they just started, um, we're like 600 miles in. So, you know, I mean, you hit Katahdin, you hit 100 Mile Wilderness, and then what's next? Presidential's Whites. Um, I'm sure <laughs> that that's really hard, uh, no matter if you are a great hiker. And so I'm sure like that was a, you know, um, shock to the system. So, you know, maybe it's not quite as hard as the Southbounders were saying, and maybe you need to get back on. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, but that's, that's kind of where I'm at. That's what happened. 
and um, yeah, I'm gonna go get my haircut today. So all this is gonna get chopped off. And also, I have a surprise that's happening today. Actually, it's like late tonight. Um, I actually have some big things coming, but I don't wanna reveal them yet. So uh, stay tuned, just know I quit the trail, I'm off of it for now. And maybe I didn't quit, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens, maybe I'll go back out. Um, stay tuned, love you guys. It's already recording. Okay. Oh, Father, tell me and be honest. Is some life meant to break your dreams? To get our eyes okay. used to the dark. So come, your light. We'll finally see. <laughs>